What if I told you you didn't have to dread the holidays and you could continue with your health and weight loss goals regardless of our culture's nature to indulge and celebrate toxic foods around this time of year? Are you sure you don't want one of my homemade treats? I made them just for you. Tip number one, have a plan going into the holidays. If you don't decide ahead of time where your boundaries are, you are bound to get more flexible and get more lenient and make more exceptions with your diet and the types of foods that you choose. I'm gonna set these down because they seriously gross me out. That's like straight high fructose corn syrup, refined sugar and oil. That's not food, my friends. The closer you get to having that perspective, the easier this gets. Okay, so having a plan for the holidays. And this goes into any celebration or any social event. If you go into it with boundaries, knowing, okay, I'm going to allow myself a little bit of this, I'm not gonna touch that, and I'm just gonna have one of these, then you are so much more likely to come out of it with the intention that you went into it with, <laughs> without a bunch of regrets about decisions you fell back on, and oh, I, I was just gonna have a little bit of this, but I ended up having the whole platter. It's so much easier when you know ahead of time, this is what I'm having, this is what I'm not having. If you are gonna have some alcoholic beverages, decide how many you're going to have. If you are going to have dessert, decide how much you're going to have. The more specific you can get, the better. It even helps to write this down to keep you motivated and on track. And if your decision isn't to crack at all and it's not to have any of those indulgent treats or beverages during this time of year, then write that, make that for yourself. If you want 100%, by all means, go 100%. That's obviously the best route for your health, so why not? There is no reason to make ex exceptions on your health just because it's a specific time of year or you're with specific people or there's a specific treat that you always have that time of year that you would feel left out if you didn't have it or you would feel deprived. This lifestyle is about embracing the healthful foods and readjusting your paradigm and your expectations. So you don't have to expect the holidays to be this gluttonous, indulgent feast. It can be a very healthful experience that you share with your loved ones. The second tip is to let the host or the hostess of the party know that you do have these dietary changes and what they can anticipate. You can let them know what you're going to be bringing or they may be interested in what kind of changes they can make to the types of foods that they're preparing in order to accommodate you better. People are very open to making certain dietary accommodations especially in this environment where more and more people are suffering from these food sensitivities and diet-related chronic disease. They're also gonna appreciate the forethought because they may have wasted their time and energy making you a dish that you were just gonna turn down otherwise. So it's always good just to be open about these things. This will also lessen the awkwardness and anxiety involved in the day of the event. So there's no surprises and everyone knows what to expect, you as well as the host. The second option to this tip is to be the host or hostess. I was terrified to start putting on my own dinner parties and throwing vegan and whole food plant-based parties, but it's so much easier and more enjoyable than you think because guests still bring whatever it is that they want to eat, to share and to exchange. And my significant other would always have some kind of meat-based item that people could indulge in if they so choose to. But I would stay consistent with my values and refrain from cooking any animal products as well as those highly refined processed treats that people tend to choose around the holidays. And you don't have to continue with those traditions. You can make your own traditions. It's so much more enjoyable to leave the dinner party feeling energized and healthful than it is to feel sluggish and like there's a big pit in your stomach because you ate so much food and you just wanna go take a nap. People may seem a little put off by it at first, but eventually they will start to appreciate the difference in the way they feel following the meal. So being the hostess allows you to control for all of those different factors that may be causing you anxiety <laughs> going into the holidays. And if you wanna make it 100% vegan and whole food plant-based, then good for you. I 100% support that. You don't necessarily have to accommodate with those toxic foods. If people really care about you, they're not gonna care about one meal lacking a bunch of refined sugar, oil, and animal products. Now, there may be some family members that might feel differently. I can't speak for everyone, but this has just been my experience. If you found value in that tip, make sure you give this video a like. It really helps to support my channel. The third tip is to bring a dish 
that you can enjoy freely. So this is really important because it may be the only thing there that you can really eat. My super easy go-tos in this area are raw vegetables with homemade hummus or a giant fruit salad or both. That way I know I'm getting my fruits and my veggies and you can snack and snack and snack and literally it's not going to harm your weight loss goals by any means. It's fruits and vegetables. It's very much in line with your health goals. But on top of that, this is a very culturally acceptable dish that everybody can enjoy. So you can't go wrong with fruits and vegetables. Also, don't forget your balsamic, some kind of vinegar or some kind of oil-free dressing that you made from home to bring to the party because there will likely be some kind of salad that you can eat, but highly likely there is some dressing that is going to be in line with your health goals. Number four is my tried and true strategy of eating before you go. This may sound super silly, but it works like a charm every time. You're not going to go overindulge in anything if you're already satiated. Food is so much more appealing when you are hungry, let alone starving, and there's food everywhere and everybody is eating these delicious treats and goodness. The meal that you have prior to attending this social event around the holidays needs to contain some form of starch. Potatoes, sweet potatoes, squash, beans, rice, amaranth, teff, any kind of whole grain is going to be your best friend right before you attend any of these holiday gatherings. These foods are full of fiber and water and are sure to keep you feeling full long after you've eaten. See, this is why I always bring fruits and veggies as my dish to share with everybody because I'm already stuffed full of my starches at home. And then when I get there, I can snack on the fruits and veggies and I can perfectly stay in line with my weight loss efforts. Because maintaining your weight loss around the holidays is by far a challenge when everybody around you is doing the opposite. Number five is to have your responses ready prior to going because you are going to get a lot of questions and sometimes it seems pretty interrogating and some people are well-meaning, some people not so much, but either way, it's so much better to respond to them in a non-defensive, non-insecure manner in order to have a better exchange. I mean, it is the holidays. We are trying to keep the peace, are we not? There are so many family and holiday dynamics to worry about without making diet another one. So it's best to disarm people by showing them that, you know, you're just trying this. Maybe it's for you, maybe it's not. Maybe it's just something that you're gonna do for the time being, but it seems to be working and your doctor's in line with it and your biomarkers are improving and everything looks like it's moving in the right direction. So you're just gonna continue this experiment for a little while. If you guys are interested in learning more about your responses in these social situations around your dietary choices, make sure you check out Dr. Doug Lyle's Getting Along Without Going Along. It is by far the best information I've been able to find on ways to train and teach yourself how to respond to people in a non-defensive manner when it comes to these questions around your dietary choices because people are very, very emotionally driven when it comes to their dietary choices. This is a very personal topic because what we eat literally becomes us. It literally becomes our DNA. So it's important to approach this in a non-defensive, relaxed manner. And if you feel yourself getting a little defensive, take a step back and just remind yourself that our society is not there yet. It's going to take many more years before other people, unfortunately, get the information that you have sought out and obtained on your own. Trying to weave through all the BS in today's culture is very difficult around nutrition. So it's really not their fault. <laughs> as pretentious as that sounds. And finally, number six is to know your why. Have a firm foundational knowledge around the risks and benefits involved in your dietary choices. And make sure you do this prior to these high pressure circumstances where people are questioning you and you're standing in a crowd and you're trying not to offend anybody. It can be very, unnerving <laughs> to be the center of attention around your dietary choices. If you don't have a why come to mind immediately when I get to this tip, you should really sit down and think about why you're doing this. Because if you haven't made a firm decision in your mind, which way your diet is leading you and why, you're gonna have a really hard time saying no thank you to this. And eventually it gets easier and easier. This is not food. And soon you will be kind of grossed out by this sort of thing, if you're not already. These toxic pseudo foods are not meant to be in our system. 
and it's unfortunate that the rest of our culture hasn't caught up to that yet. But in the meantime, you can be the example. People have all sorts of reasons for wanting to live a healthier lifestyle. They wanna play with their grandkids when they get older. They wanna refrain from having all sorts of debilitating chronic illnesses and mobility problems moving into their old age. They wanna be independent as long as, and functional as long as possible. Maybe you wanna get rid of your diabetes or your heart disease or you know some other negative chronic illness that's impacting and debilitating your life. Whatever it is, just know your why and hold it tightly as you go into these social circumstances. So when it comes to having your responses ready, I used to go into these social circumstances incredibly defensive and I would preach, I would tell everybody about the wonderful benefits of this diet and how much it's helped me and how I've been able to overcome this, 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 and this. And you should try it too. Everybody should start eating this way and it's better for the environment and you're hurting the planet and it's more economical and it's more ethical. But in the end, you're just going to make people more uncomfortable, more defensive, and feel like they have to get aggressive about their stance and their dietary pattern. People don't like to feel judged about what they eat, especially around the holidays. I'm sure you can attest to that. So just like we don't like to be judged for our healthy choices, we shouldn't be judging others for their not so healthy choices. You just have to let people be on their own journey. This took me a really, really long time because these are your friends and family. These are the most loved and adored people in your life, or at least they should be. <laughs> but with that said, we all want them to live a longer, healthier life, and we all want them to thrive and grow old together, but it's just not the reality. People may or may not come across these realizations throughout their lifespan. It's really not up to us to convert them. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't blame you for trying because I certainly have. I hope you guys found value in this video. The holidays can be so stressful. You don't need to add to it with your dietary choices and the way people are going to respond to them. So make sure you leave me some comments about things that you're struggling with during this holiday season. And I will see you guys in the next one.